Hi, I'm Rob Rankin from Thinking Plainly. Welcome to the Bonneville. So today, we're going to look at The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I mean, where to start with this one? It's extremely famous. Over 65 million copies have been sold. Although saying that, it's probably one of those books that you know of or have heard of, but haven't actually read. Or possibly you've done it at school years ago, uh, and I can't remember it. Or maybe there's a few of you that absolutely love it and probably read it two or three times a year. Actually, that could be any book. Anyway, in a lot of people's minds, it's connected to controversy. But in my own humble opinion, I'm going to focus on some of the more positive aspects. Firstly, it's extremely readable, which perhaps accounts why so many people of different ages and backgrounds all seem to be able to take something from it. Secondly, it's very funny, and also it's very moving. So it may be a bit irresponsible for me to select a book that highlights underage teenage drinking, uh, but booze plays an important role in this book. And although there's tons of themes you can look at when analysing Catcher in the Rye, alcohol does have a link to a lot of them. Depression, coping with the death of loved ones, the preservation or loss of children's innocence, identity, loneliness, the authenticity of people and society, sexuality and sex. And whether or not you knew that at 16 or 17, there are some of the reasons why this book is so loved. Because everybody can see a little bit, or maybe a lot of, themselves in Holden Coalfield. There's lots of drinks mentioned in this book. There's scotch and soda, which is what Holden has when he actually manages to get served. Rum and Coke, Tom Collins and others. But instead, we're going to look at a favourite of Holden's that he doesn't actually have in the book. But I think we'll make a more interesting video. Does that make me a phony? Raw, what's a frozen daiquiri? Frozen daiquiri, really easy drink to make. It's just a frozen version of, the, of a natural daiquiri. So you just take those ingredients, stick it in the blender and blend it up with some crushed ice. So, for this we're gonna need uh, lime juice, sugar syrup and some rum. We'll start with the sugar syrup. So this is just one part water, one part sugar. We'll call it simple syrup. Most recipes say that you should have equal parts sugar and lime juice, but I tend to find that makes for a bit of a bland drink. So. I'm going to add a bit more sugar than lime. Uh, that was about 35, 40 ml. And then you take freshly squeezed lime juice. Uh, about 25 ml of that. And a lot of other people uh, would add some fruit. Strawberries make a really nice uh, frozen daiquiri. Or pineapple, maybe. Uh, okay, finally, we're going to use a silver or light Cuban rum. In a big 50 ml, we'll do that. And that's it, just add the ice, big scoop, stick it in the blender. Now to get to put the lid on. Frozen daiquiri. Wow, looks lovely, looks great. Let's have a taste. That is delicious. That is great. Very nice. So, for our second drink, instead of making a twist on the daiquiri, we're going to take one of the ingredients, rum, and make one of the drinks that's mentioned several times in the book. What's a highball? A highball rub is just a, it's a family of, family of drinks that come in a, come in a highball glass, so it's, uh, whereas most cocktails are predominantly booze, a highball would be something that's uh, alcohol lengthened with a, with a mixer. What we're going to make today, going on from the frozen daiquiri, the drink called a rum swizzle, is one of my favourites and it's really, really easy to make. Very similar ingredients to the drink we just made a minute ago. Uh, so we go with our sugar syrup again, take about 20 mils of that. Twenty-five mils of freshly squeezed lime juice. We're going to add an ingredient called velvet falerna, which is a Caribbean liqueur made with lime and cloves. Ten mil of that. This adds a real nice depth and complexity to the drink. Some Angostura bitters. A couple of dashes. 
and your rum. So we're going to use nice aged rum. 50 ml should do it. Probably go up to 60 if you fancy. And that's it. So we just add the crushed ice. And this is called a rum swizzle because to make it you need to swizzle it. And this is swizzling. <laughs> so this just mixes the drink and adds some dilution to the crushed ice. Fantastic. I see. To my taste. Oh, that is gorgeous. That is that is lovely. That is really really nice. Lovely, fantastic. Highball, rum swizzle. Okay, so as you know, uh, I'm totally unqualified and not in the least bit uh, professional when it comes to tasting. But I'm going to carry on with our um, tasting guide, our rating system for our first drink, the frozen daiquiri. I really liked it, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I think it's great. Our second drink, the rum swizzle, it's our first five out of five. It's fantastic. It's really good. Everyone's gotta give this a try at home. So those are our drinks, inspired from the catcher in the rye. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. We had a lot of fun doing it. Thanks once more to Rory of the Bonneville. Please subscribe and we'll see you in our next video. Where do all the ducks go in winter? She's there. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> 20 years of bartending, I've never done that in my life. <laughs>